Hello everyone, Amy R here with Perry Paper and Ink and for today's card I am using some brand new pink and main stamps and wafer dies. I was invited to be a part of their fifth birthday blog hop so I'll have info on the hop and whatnot and the giveaways and all that stuff on my blog. So for my card I'm using the new B-Day stamp set which I just got to giggle out of the name because my youngest, that's how he used to say birthday. It's your B day. <laughs> so that just gave me a giggle. Anyhow, I am stamping the images on the set. I'm using my travel stamp platform and I stamped them onto Nina Classic Crest Solar White 80 pound cardstock using Simon Says Stamps Intense Black Ink. And I stamped all the images from the set and stamped them a couple times to get that crisp black outline. And then I am coloring them all in with Copic markers. Now, since they're bees and bees are black and yellow, um, I'm using cool grays for the black because if you just colored them f straight up black, whether you're using uh, Copics or you know other coloring medium or anything like that, more often than not, you're it, you're gonna lose all definition. Like you wouldn't be able to see their little smiles. It would just look like flat black. So. Generally, if I am coloring something that is supposed to be black, I like to use grays and especially the cool grays, but you could also use the warm grays or there's the toner ones or the neutrals. It kind of just depends on the look you're going for, but I force of habit with me is to usually reach for the cool grays for that. So I did those areas first. And then I went in with some yellows and decided to not only do their little bodies because there isn't much for the little stripes, I wanted more of the yellow. So I also did like the gifts and the balloon and whatnot too, and the little birthday hat, just to bring in more of that, you know, really bright, cheerful yellow color. And as my usual mode of coloring is with Copics, I go darkest to lightest because it's just, it's faster and more convenient. <laughs> but if you are learning with Copics, if you are struggling with blending and all that, um, rule of thumb is to go lightest to darkest because you do have a lot more control about how much color you're adding. So I did that and then I did add some yellow around that little candle on his face because since it's alcohol based marker you can add lighter colors over darker so I wanted that kind of glow to show up on the little bee's face where the candle would be. So after I did um, the yellows I went in and just took my BG quadruple zero which is just extremely pale you know blue and went over their all their little wings with that and then I took some browns to do this little branch and use that on the cupcake as well and then um, I'm gonna go in and do the little beehive and I decided not to do the beehive in the same yellows as everything else. I wanted it a little bit um, deeper. So I'm using yellow, the YR markers for this and I did miss a spot. I realized that later. I off camera end up coloring it in. It, it's funny how you can be, you know, literally staring at an image and coloring it and the amount of times I miss a spot and have even gone so far as I have videos on my YouTube channel where I completely finished the card and I don't even realize it until I'm editing. It's like, I totally forgot to color that one area. Anyway, but this time I caught it before I finished the card. So did the, did the little beehive and then I decided to pull in some green since I needed to color the leaves on the little branch there and decided to use that same green combo for like the gifts, the birthday hat and these little cute banner that's like draped around the beehive. So since I had green, I was like, hmm, I should pull in blue because I honestly with these, I didn't have a full on color combo chosen before I started all my coloring. But once I added the green, I was like, you know, these are looking like the perfect little color combo for a little boy's card. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to grab some blue while I'm at it and finish off everything else, the little banner and the gifts and, and the top of the cupcake with a blue combo. So I'd use the, these blues on a previous card and really liked how they look together. So I use those on this as well. And then um, ended up finishing that banner, which is the same yellows that I used on the balloons and whatnot. So after I had all of my coloring done, I pulled out my go-to Jelly Roll white gel pen, which is the Jelly Roll 10. And I said this in a previous video, but my biggest tip for continuing to make gel pens work, because it is a thing, you know, they tend to dry out, is one, the Jelly Roll seems to work better. But another thing is I use mine very, very consistently. Like I use my gel pen 
almost every single day so it doesn't have the chance to sit for too long if gel pens if they sit for too long they start to dry out and use more often than not if it sits for long enough and it really dries out there is literally no reviving it so that is you know as simple as it sounds one of my biggest tips is just use it consistently even if you're not working on a project even if you like scribbled it a little bit just on some scrap paper if you know you have a chance to remember that if it's something that happens to you a lot because that did used to happen to me a lot so anywho after i did you know the little gel pen highlights and whatnot i die cut them with their coordinating wafer dies and then on my card base here i am blending on some wendy vecchi sky blue make art ink and i'm using one of my ranger or one of my picket fence uh, life-changing blending brushes and I've sped this up in the editing it didn't take very long though but I started in the center of my card base and I'm just you know applying color there and then allowing it to just blend out to nothing on the edges and I wanted all the color kind of concentrated on the center there and just kind of fading out just to give a little bit of you know some color to the background of this card so took my time blended that a little bit just to make sure i get that nice really soft perfect little blend along the outside and then I've, i couldn't i had to add some splatter i couldn't resist um i will say i did actually limit myself i was gonna add like yellow splatter green splatter blue splatter. you know i was gonna splatter all the things but I kept it just one color. So I pulled out my fossilized amber distress oxide spray because I'm really liking these for splatter and um, shook it up really well and then just added a little bit to an acrylic block and then just used a paintbrush to add that splatter to my background. So that only took a few seconds to do. So I'm gonna set this aside, let that dry. While that's drying, I'm gonna run some yellow cardstock through my little Xyron three inch sticker maker. So now all these pieces have adhesive on the back of them. And once I've got that adhesive on, I can remove the release paper. And then I'm going to die cut all three of these pieces with the new pink and main happy birthday wafer die. I'm just going to use the word die. There is an outline that comes with this as well. Like, you know, the, the bubble, the word bubble, as I like to call it. Um, I didn't use that for this card. I just wanted just the words. So since there's adhesive on the back of them, all I have to do is peel off the backing paper and I can stack these together. So I'll have three layers of these die cut words, which gives it just that dimension that I really, really like. And I always leave, or I usually try to leave the like base layer in the scrap of cardstock because it just kind of holds everything in place and makes it move along faster and more convenient. So, and I also love my little Xyron for this because it just, it gives me that wiggle room. I don't have to move as quickly. I don't have to worry so much that, you know, I have glue oozing out at all. Um, it doesn't stay permanently adhered until you really press it down. So I just, I like that feeling of, I can just kind of move things around, stack things together, move them around on my card, etc. So I got everything stacked together and then I'll pop them out of the backing paper there and then same thing, just kind of arrange it on my card before pressing everything down. I kind of had a rough idea of how I was going to lay everything out, but that's the nice thing is being able to kind of actually lay it out on the card and make sure things fit and are actually going to work. So once I was happy with the placement, I can press down the die cut words. And then I'm going to start adhering my little characters and whatnot with a combination of craft tacky glue and foam adhesive squares. So a little beehive I adhered with the craft tacky glue. And then this one with the gift, I was like, oh, he fits just perfect, you know, right there on the end of the word. So I just used some foam adhesive to pop him up and into place. And then this little guy with the balloon, I wanted to adhere kind of lower down on the card, but I really don't like when it you know covers large parts of a sentiment that just bothers me so i kind of looked at it for a second i was like great what am i gonna do but thankfully i hadn't pressed the b of the birthday down <laughs> very far so i was able to like peel it up and peel it off the top layer but honestly i could have just read like quickly die cut that b from like one of the scraps of yellow cardstock that already had the adhesive on the back of it but Again, I had the wiggle room to be able to easily remove that without tearing it. So I just removed the top one so that I could adhere this little B into place and then adhere the actual letter B over top just so that it wasn't completely covered. That just made me feel better. So adhered that into place. And then on the inside of the card, I am going to um, adhere the last little B, the one with the little 
uh, cupcake and then I have a sentiment from the uh, B-Day stamp set that says just heard the buzz it's your birthday so I'm gonna ink that up with Wendy Vecchi sunflower ink oh and I adhered the little the little tiny bees I just cut down the little foam tape so I could um, pop those into place so I'm gonna kind of lay out my little bee just to give me a little visual idea of where I can place the sentiment and then I can ink up that sentiment with the sunflower ink get that inked up. I'm going to stamp that onto the inside of my card and then I'm going to adhere that little B right next to the sentiment with the craft tacky glue. And once I got that adhered, that finishes off the card. I did not add any bling. I didn't add any glitter. I know, shocking, but I just thought the color and just the little characters were so cute that yeah, I have the splatter that that made me happy. So as always, there will be a link below the video to my blog post. There will be a link to all the supplies used. There will be info in the blog post about the blog hop and the giveaway. So you can check that out below if you are interested. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.